Hello fellow Linux gamers, my name is GhostQuad57 and today I'm playing Xenonauts for Linux. Now I have done a video of Xenonauts before, however I felt that my previous video was not informative enough, so I thought um, I would play the game a little bit, see some online guides, watch a video or two, so that way I could uh, tackle this game again and sort of give a much more um, in-depth look at the game instead of just sort of glancing over everything. Anyway, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is the game options here in the main screen. Um, you can change things like uh, mouse sensitivity, keyboard scroll sensitivity, uh, but you can also rebind just about everything really if you look at the uh, rebindings here, which is it's a really nice feature that I really should have uh, talked about. But anyway, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and click on new game here. I'm going to start off on easy because, uh, yeah, I st I'm still new to this game. I, I can't play it. I can play it at a basic level, but I don't really feel like I'm ready for the uh, more advanced difficulties. Now I'm going to turn off explanatory dialogues um, just because I'm going to sort of walk you guys through what everything does. Uh, unfortunately, there's no tutorial, tutorial, which I feel like is one of this game's really... Uh, lacking features is definitely the lack of a tutorial because I felt like playing this game I, I wasn't really told enough like the explanatory dialogues and the uh, Xenopedia the end game help screen kind of tells you a lot of information but it doesn't really tell you what to do with everything it just sort of says what things are effective against um, but luckily there is a community for that if you go to the steam forums for this game you can't get a lot of uh, guides and tips and whatnot. So yeah, once you uh, start the, once you select your difficulty and uh, start the game, you are uh, told to choose your primary base location. This is probably the most important aspect uh, when starting a new game. Um, <coughs> excuse me. So yeah, I used to pick uh, North America, which I because you know that's where I live, so I thought ah, for immersion purposes it'd be be neat to do that. But then I learned that this is probably uh, not the area you want to start in. In fact, it's like one of the worst areas. It's a good idea to start in the Middle East or somewhere maybe in North Africa. So that way you can cover uh, multiple countries. Um, because how well you cover countries will affect your relations with that region. And, uh, will and that will affect your funding that you receive from the nation. So it's a good idea at the start to just sort of cover everything. Like, so that's why I picked Middle East. And you get to rename your base. I'm just going to keep it at Middle East. And then, yeah, once you uh, make your base on the Geoscape, that's what this little interface is called, uh, go ahead and click on your base. And then the first thing you're presented with is the base management. Um, as you see here, I have four hangars. I have a laboratory, uh, workshop, storeroom, living quarters, and radar. And this is just sort of the layout of your base, and you can do things like uh, add more additions um, to fit your needs. Like, I think I should add two more hangars. And you see here, there's a, the, those uh, red letters uh, or how long the uh, construction time is. So now that I place that down, it's going to take about five days for that to finish. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, just sort of create what is usually uh, the recommended default. So I'm going to add two hangars, uh, two medical centers so that my troops are healed faster, and two radar arrays so that I can uh, see more in the geoscape menu. So when my uh, radar arrays get upgraded, that little circle's bigger and I can uh, spot UFOs from further away. We're also going to add living quarters because um, that way we can have more personnel on the base. Um, so yeah, you also get things over here that's important to note. You know, you can see how many soldiers you have, scientists. Uh, you get your detection range. Uh, you have your monthly maintenance here. So there is definitely a lot of micromanaging in this game. And it's very daunting at first, but uh, after a while you pick it up and it definitely becomes fun. You know, it's, it's almost like a city simulator in that sense where it's kind of like, oh man, I gotta micromanage everything and then after a while you, you kind of get used to it. So this is the research screen. Now, as you uh, intercept UFOs, you know, you, uh, you take them down and, you know, kill the aliens and whatnot, all that fun stuff. Um, usually uncover artifacts or even sometimes alien bodies and when you do that you can research them here 
and what I'll, that'll do is that'll unlock additional uh, items to build like for instance if I uh, bring back an alien autopsy and I have them research it uh, after depending on how many scientists you put on it like by default we have 10 here I'm actually gonna buy five additional scientists which is a good idea so you can sort of get the first thing out of the way but of course it takes a while for them to come to your base even after you hire them anyway yeah so uh, say you go to a mission you intercept uh, a UFO you take it down and uh, then you kill all the surviving aliens well when you bring the uh, you can bring the body back to have it autopsied and when you do that some things can happen like they can figure out weaknesses from them and craft uh, and research stun grenades that you can then craft and use in combat. Now once you research something you're generally going to want to come over here to the workshop and uh, you see here I don't have anything right now but uh, once you get done researching things new stuff becomes available in the workshop that you can then uh, pay the engineers to uh, construct. So yeah then we're going to go ahead and go to the barracks. This is uh, pretty much what you think it is. It's just where you manage your soldiers. There are multiple stats that you have to consider when uh, selecting your soldier. There's time units, uh, hit points, strength, accuracy, reflex, and bravery. Now all this sound, all this is you know pretty self-explanatory, but what's time units, reflexes, and ba bravery, you ask? Well, time units is how much moves a, uh, how much, uh, yeah, how much movement a character is allowed to do uh, in one turn, and reflexes is their chance of uh, firing a reflex shot. I'll get into that once we get into combat. And bravery is, uh, depending on your character's bravery, if um, one soldier notices another one shot, uh, certain soldiers with low bravery might like panic and freak out and just run away and waste a turn, so that's always fun. You come over here and assigned uh, assign which uh, task force you want them to be in. I have by default, you know, all these are assigned to Charlie One, and you have two unassigned. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the storeroom now. This is where, when you uncover alien artifacts, you can choose to sell them here or trade them and all that stuff. We don't really have anything now. And this is the soldier equipment. This is another important menu to. Uh, pay attention to. It's generally a good idea to have one of everything. So as you can see here I can sort of click on the left side through all my troops for Charlie 1 and I have all their attributes here and I can rename them and here's all their uh, accommodations I guess you could say. <coughs> um, and we can do things like change their default weapons and then add equipment like uh, grenades and rockets and whatnot. What I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to change one of my riflemen's here. Um, I think this one because this one has a lot of time units. I'm going to click here, this little star. And I'm going to change role, and then you have a variety of classes to choose from. I'm going to go ahead and choose shield because the shield's a very useful class to have. Uh, the shield can, using the combat shield, the uh, shield class can provide cover for your uh, soldiers so it's always a good idea to have a uh, shield. I'm also going to add a rocketeer which is another very useful class as the rocketeer allows for um, blasting up cover and alien ships and all that so it's a very good class to have as well. We're also going to give her some flashbangs and grenades. Uh, and one important thing to notice when giving your character, uh, adjusting their loadout and giving them additional things like grenades and whatnot, is to pay attention to their carried weight. Because you see here there's this gray area, gray area. that's uh, additional things that they can carry without receiving a uh, movement penalty. But as you start to go over that gray and it starts going through the red, they, uh, your character is over encumbered and they will sort of receive a movement penalty for each additional item you tack on over that. So it's a good idea to stay in that green there so that way your movement isn't affected, which is a very big negative. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and sort of go to everybody and adjust their equipment. So let's get rid of that. Give them an 
additional flashbang. I really like the flashbangs. So I'm just going to go ahead and sort of make sure everybody has one of those. Give a C4 to my assault. Ooh, can I carry an additional C4? Oh, look at that, two C4s. That's really useful for uh, exposing cover. Um, give you additional ammo. Um, smoke grenade. I'm just gonna sort of give one of everything. I'm not really good when it comes to laying out this stuff, so I just sort of give one of everything. Um, yeah, and I feel like that's a pretty good spread of classes, so I should probably give it a smoke and a flash. There we go. Anyway, yeah, now that we're done um, adjusting our soldiers' equipment, we can then go to the vehicle equipment. Now, I don't have any vehicles right now, but yeah, as you uh, play through the game, you can research new vehicles and uh, then have your engineers build them. And then uh, once they're built, you can change things like their weapon loadouts and etc. And then the vehicles you can actually use in ground combat. Uh, aircraft equipment. Now, here you're going to change the uh, equipment of your interceptors and dropships. Although the dropship doesn't have any equipment, you just actually adjust the troops' positions. Uh, but yeah, this is also where you buy new planes. But yeah, um, you see here you get to change the missile type, although I only have Sidewinder missiles because it is the start. Um, and you can also rename the aircraft and you get the um, attributes over here of the uh, aircraft you have selected. Uh, the Condor is the really basic interceptor. It's really good for dog fights and just basic stuff like that. And uh, with the dropship, it's a good idea to sort of align your troops properly. Uh, I'm going to put some some uh, troops on the side here so that when we first land, I can have them move out and sort of uh, inspect the area. So we're going to get some, I'm just going to sort of sort of move these guys around a little bit. Put the rocketeer up here. Is the rocketeer? Right here. Do, do, do. There we go. Nope. There we go. That's a good layout, I feel like. Yes, yeah, so that way when we land, we sort of have a really good... Uh, and Because there, there is some rare cases where aliens will uh, be right next to your dropship when you land. So it's a good idea to have this laid out like this. It also just makes movement a lot quicker. Um, then you have the Zenithpedia over here, which I mentioned earlier. It gives like information about basic stuff. Um, as you unlock new stuff, this Xenopedia will be filled in. Um, anyway, yeah. So yeah, here's the, uh, going back to the Geoscape, this is prob probably, or most likely, where you'll spend uh, most of your time. Um, you can sort of... Oh, wow, first UFO detected. Now, one thing I, I'm going to mention before I get into the UFOs is this black area here is uh, means that it's nighttime for that region. Um, that's a very important thing because that will affect the uh, outcome of battle. Anyway, yeah, our first UFO has been detected and uh, we can center on it. Click on that there and it just sort of snaps to them, which is very useful. Um, you can uh, then choose to, when you have a UFO detected, you can choose to intercept it, which is to send one of your aircrafts to meet it. Just give it a friendly greeting, you know, say what's up. Uh, we're going to send one of our condors. You can send multiple um, aircrafts, but you don't really need to at the start of the game, um, because most of the aircrafts are really basic and not too difficult. Uh, I should probably mention you can build a second base, like you click up here and you can build a second base in a uh, different region. That's usually not a good idea until about the next month, which is a good couple, uh, I think about an hour, maybe 30 minutes to an hour of gameplay in, um, because, you know, you do have funding here and you don't want to uh, have to you don't want to have two bases open sucking your money dry you know it's a good idea to just have one um, anyway yeah let's go ahead and send the condor here what will happen is the condor will just chase down the UFO speed up now when you uh, intercept the UFO you have a variety of options you can engage the target which is the manual victory simulator which I'm going to do in a minute you can disengage, which is just retreat back to the uh, base. Um, you can tail the target, which is just follow it. And you can also tail until over land. Now this is a really useful thing because as you can see, he is currently over water. And if I were to shoot him down now, I would. Pr there's a pretty high chance that I would lose the uh, 
whatever he has in his ship, so I can't research it. So it's a good idea uh, tail until overland, so that way when he's overland, we can engage him. We can also auto resolve, which is uh, basically let's not. If you don't want to do manual combat, you can just say auto resolve, and if your ship's good enough, then it'll win, depending on how good your ship is, is uh, the chances. So we're gonna tail until overland here. I'm gonna speed up. Oh crap, my aircraft's low on fuel. Uh, I should have took him down there. Oh, there's UFO 1 again. Um, now because Condor 1 is low on fuel, I'm going to send Condor 2. Hopefully he gets him over land. Perfect. And we can and choose to engage. Now this is the um, space combat screen. Uh, and the basic idea is you pause the game with space bar, which is a good idea to do. So you can sort of... Um, figure out what's going on and get a good look at everything. But the basic way the game works is you just sort of click around and that uh, tells your ship to move to different uh, locations. For me though, the this screen is currently bugged and when I click it doesn't really uh, move around. This game does have some bugs that the developers are working out right now. Um, they have been very open about it in the uh, Steam forums. Um, so yeah, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to sort of turn off one of our missiles and I'll Oh, I forgot to mention, we can also adjust our speed, um, our throttle. We can uh, do things like afterburners, which will have my ship fly faster, of course. And we can also dodge, which is useful for incoming enemy missiles. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to turn off one of our missiles so that when we, be when we come in firing range... You see here... I fired the left missile here and he went to dodge it so that what we can then do is turn a missile on and then choose to sort of dodge and that you see here I just fired my second missile and it hit him because uh, he dodged the other one and then left him vulnerable for a uh, sec the second missile which he didn't see coming anyway yeah now that uh, there's a crash site there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna send our condor back to base and when there's ever a crash landing or just a UFO landing, sometimes they'll land and you won't even have to take them down. Um, you can choose to intercept it with a, uh, with a dropship, which is what Charlie 1 is, uh, or you can airstrike it. Now airstriking is, does cost money, but it can be useful if you have sort of like multiple uh, UFO crash sites and you don't want to have to do ground combat for all of them. You can just airstrike it and sort of not have to deal with it. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and intercept it. We're gonna choose Charlie 1, which is our dropship. What this will do is this will get our uh, troops deployed there and then we could start the ground combat screen. I could sort of walk you guys through it. So we're gonna go ahead and engage. And that will take us to the uh, ground combat. Anyway, yeah, so once we're in the uh, ground combat section of the game, what we can uh, do is we can sort of move our troops out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and explain everything. Uh, the way ground combat works is you just click on a troop and then you just sort of click here to see uh, where you want to move them. Um, now uh, as you see there's a number there. That number tells us how many timed units we're going to have after this uh, action is completed. You know the action of moving. Now Time units is basically just how many uh, turns your uh, soldier is allowed to do in that one, how many actions your soldier is allowed to perform in that one turn. So uh, characters with high time units can perform a variety of things like we can move very far and crouch and all that without uh, um, having much difficulty. Um, so yeah, you can crouch with C which does consume time units. Uh, I believe the, how much time units consumed is uh, completely dependent on the character's uh, attributes. Um, so yeah, you notice he still has a good bit of time units. Well, it's not a good idea to spend your time units uh, entirely because reserving time units is uh, a really good strategy because depending on your character's reflex attribute, if their reflex attribute is really high, um, they will use that reserved time units 
on the enemy's turn to fire back if the enemy comes into view. So see if an enemy was to jump over this cover and get right here, my unit would actually fire at him because I left him with enough time minutes to do so. So it's a very useful uh, thing to keep in mind. And that's what the uh, reflex attribute is for. I, I told you guys I'd let you know what that was about. So yeah, it's a good idea to hit C to put your units into crouch mode because that will make them harder to hit and give them uh, accuracy boost. So yeah, we're just gonna sort of move our troops out here and um, Oh, wow, our first alien. That was quick. Well, anyway, yeah, once you have an enemy alien in sight, you can uh, shoot it. We can also right-click to do a precision shot. You see here he's behind that log there, and that will reduce my chances of hitting him. So I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to sort of point at him and then do this so that way. Yeah, and see, this is uh, the useful thing about the uh, shield is uh, she is able to... Uh, use that as a cover to absorb some damage a little bit and then my troops I'm gonna get the shotgunner up here well no I should get a rifleman um, get him right here and he can sort of pop this guy Let's see here if I can hit this one. oh wow I missed that entirely as you see here he shot back despite the fact that it wasn't his turn that was the reflex shot I was talking about um, you can do things like let me see here, I don't know if I have enough uh, points for it, I don't. But you can do things like throw a flash grenade, which will um, kind of stun him um, so that he cannot do reflex shots and it also wastes a lot of his uh, timed units for the next turn. So that's a very important strategy. Um, let's see here if I can't. Yeah, see he's far away so I, I, that yellow indicates that it's not going to be very effective at that range see if I can't yeah and one interesting thing um, you could do is you notice how it will take 49 time units to shoot him well one well uh, one thing I can do is I can come over here to time units reserve and I can click on burst and what that does is it tells me when uh, I'm moving out of uh, when my movement will consume uh, too much time units and I will not be able to perform that action so that's a very useful uh, useful thing there. So, so it just tells you, okay, if you move here, you're not going to have enough to perform burst. Um, I'm just going to sort of move every machine gun out right here, put her behind this log. Um, yeah, that's blocking me. Let's see if I can't get right here. Let's see if I can't shoot them from here. Oh, yep, I can do at least one. Yeah, you can. Click with some classes you can uh, you could right click multiple times to get even more precision shot. I'm just gonna do this one. Yeah, see here he was suppressed. That was the stun thing I was talking about earlier. So now he won't be able to uh, do a reflex shot. Um, let's see if I can't get really up close to this guy and just blast him. There we go. See that was the usefulness of the suppression because he was suppressed. He could not uh, shoot my troop that was so close up. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and move out the Rocketeer and just end our turn. You just hear, see there it said uh, hidden movement. That's because the uh, enemy forces, if you do not see them, then it won't show you their movement. I'm just going to sort of move our um, shield out. I generally use the shield as a scout. I just feel like it's a very effective class for that. There is a scout class, but I don't know. I kind of feel like it's redundant to have the shield and the scout because I feel like the uh, the shield does a good enough job. Oh, there's a farmer there with a shotgun. Um, yes, yeah, sometimes civilians will uh, help you with combat. Like in some areas, there will be police officers who will shoot at the aliens and sort of help you out, which is a neat little thing. I'm just going to sort of move everyone up, see if I can't spot anyone. There was an alien here, so I'm going to assume that their uh, UFO is around here, their ship. I'm going to keep the sniper far back here. Might as well move all these soldiers up with them. 
Um, we'll go up here. Oh. Whoa. So there's one over there. There we are. Hmm. So their ship could be over there as well. Um, oh, wow. He's moved to where I can't see him. Let's see if... There he is. Oh, but I don't have enough time it's for a shot. Ooh, and all my troops are over here. Let um, see if I can't lob a grenade. Oh, but there's a chance. Oh, I'll give it a shot. There's a chance the fence could block it. Yeah, and then next turn, that grenade will explode. Um, let's see here. Let's move my rifleman up. I think that's enough for this sort of end my turn. Oh, the fence blocked it. Well, that's perfect. Oh, he's running into the fire. Let's see if I can't. Yeah, I got him. All right, let me see something real quick. There's actually a bug with this game where uh, sometimes the um, aliens walking noise will play endlessly as you can hear so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn sound effects off so we don't have to worry about that that is an annoying bug hopefully developers get that fixed fairly soon anyway yeah now that we dealt with that guy I'm just gonna sort of move my uh, troops up a little bit yeah I forgot to mention you can change your uh, where your character is viewing with right click sort of change their uh, field of view um, which will of course consume time units so yeah every action you do consumes time units crouching looking around opening doors you know all that taxing stuff just gonna sort of make sure there's none in this barn here yeah I think we're good just gonna I'm not entirely sure uh, where they are so I'm just gonna sort of move everywhere get a good spread of the area in my turn um, let's see here yeah, so they're not over here so we can just sort of move over here to get a good look one thing I forgot to mention is that um, the environment you fight in depends uh, entirely on where you take the UFO down so for example if you were to take your UF, uh, the UFO down when I intercepted it if I would have taken the ship down around Alaska say um, I can actually when I intercept the uh, crash site with my dropship the environment I fight in will be uh, snowy so that's a neat little thing um, I don't want to oh, she's taking a lot of damage I don't want to move her up really I just want to keep her safe and cover all right so we're just gonna move him up slowly hopefully we find the UFO ship around here Move you up behind. About right here. Um, yeah, I'm just going to try to keep this, this team sort of together. I always forget about number eight. Oh, yeah, she's the one who's injured. It's going to end my turn real quick. So yeah, there's definitely it's definitely a very methodical game, you know. You always you really gotta be careful with every move you make, especially in the higher difficulties, because enemies will completely shred you. Oh, there's a ship right there. Okay, so we're not gonna engage immediately. We're just we're gonna move all our troops here, because there's usually always uh, enemies. And the uh, ship, and we're going to use our rocketeer to blast open the front door, so that's going to be fun. I hope, well, hopefully, I can do that. It might not work out. Let's see here. Let's move out. Uh, in turn. Yeah, so we're just gonna. Keep, I'm just gonna go ahead and move all of our troops here. Um, with the rocketeer right here, because I do want the rocketeer to be fairly close. 
so that way when we get in front of the ship we can just blast it uh, the, the ground combat is definitely in my opinion the uh, best part about this game I really do enjoy it I think it's very uh, fun it is slow but it is in my opinion very fun especially once you get the hang of it So yeah, now that uh, we got all our troops fairly close, I actually want to keep her uh, sort of out of the action because she is at low life and once she dies, she's pretty much gone. You can, when one of your soldiers dies, you can't pick up their body and I heard you can, there's a chance that you can revive them, but it's, uh, it's not a very good chance, so. Alright, let's go ahead and end our turn here. Alright, now that all my troops are here, I'm going to sort of move out. Oh, there's one. Yeah, I have the sound effects silence so you couldn't hear that. Let's see if the stepping noise is still going on. Oh, uh, yep, there it is. <laughs> oh, man, that's that's really annoying. Uh, that bug seems to happen all the time. They did recently, the developers did recently uh, um, release a patch that did fix uh, the game crashing whenever you threw a smoke grenade. So that was a nice addition. Wow, he died in one hit. He must have took damage from the crash. So we're going to move our Rocketeer up and just sort of move everyone else up. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit everyone here. I might just... Oh, I shouldn't have moved the Sniper up. He should be far back. Um, I'm just going to sort of... Yeah, I think that's enough soldiers, really. I don't think we need anything more. I'm going to move Rocketeer up here and turn so that way he'll have an, that shoe hop enough... Uh, Reserved units to shoot, and we're gonna go ahead and blast right here, which should. Okay, I didn't get the door. Damn it. Okay, so we're gonna tell her to reload. Oh, nope. Reload. Clicking right here on the ammo, and then we're gonna end turn again. Let's see if we can't get it this time. I'm gonna turn audio back up so you can hear the explosion. You guys are gonna have to deal with that step in noise um. oh. oh god that step in noise is really annoying I can't blast the door open this is oh this sucks I, I did mess up that shrubbery though look at that yeah ain't the plants gonna mess with me that's sort of move her out because I do really want to blast this door open because it is very fun. Oh, let's see if I can't get it really close. Oh, come on, right there. There we go, I think that got it. Let's see here, let's... Yeah, there we go, now that door is blasted open. Yeah, I couldn't really uh, line her up. Like, if I would have stepped right here, it'd be right in front of the door. And obviously, you don't want to have her uh, be two feet away from the thing she's going to blow up. So it's going to move everyone over here. Yeah, we might as well just move everyone up in case things go sour. See, so yeah, I'm going to move my uh, shield up so that way he can sort of she can sort of act as a shield. Oh, there's only one guy. I think I'm going to be able to get him with just my pistol. Yeah, see that shield came in handy there. I'm gonna, we're just going to crouch. I'm not even going to do an additional shot. We're going to move our shotgunner up. Blast him. I should have did a yeah, precision shot or whatever. Oh no, troops are blocking him. Gonna... Whoa, there's another one over there. Uh-oh. Uh oh, oh, this is bad. It's all right though. I'm gonna at least get this guy. All right, so let's probably move him up here. I may. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get in a position where I can shoot this guy over here. I might be able to do it with my sniper, but he may be obscuring the shot. Um, yeah, there's a chance that yeah. That didn't work out too well. It's gonna go ahead and end the turn. Shit, suppressed him. 
That's okay though. This this is the last guy, I'm pretty sure, so I can just Damn. He's really good. Oh man, I should throw a grenade. That'd be a perfect time. To throw a grenade right there. That'll sort of flush him out. Oh, more he's just gonna sit there. Okay. I mean, I can throw another grenade. I don't have one. I think this is a stun grenade. Let's give this a shot. Oh, what? Ah, damn, I can't get him. There's a pretty high chance that that log will block his. We'll block it. Oh, there we go. That'll work. <laughs> yep. So as you can see, mission successful. You're told uh, the items you recovered, and these are things you can uh, research on. Like you can research the alien plasma pistol, which will give you armor that can uh, has good protection against it. And also, I think at a certain point you can fit your soldiers with um, alien weaponry. So that's pretty cool. Uh, anyway, yeah, so you can go to the research screen here. Tell them, okay, commence project. You know, work on that. Alien alloys, assign some scientists to it, and when it's done, you can come over to the craft screen and go ahead and craft what you just unlocked. Anyway, yeah, I feel like um, that was a good sort of overview of the game. Uh, that's basically what you'll be doing the entire game, but as the game goes by, it does get more complex and more strategic. Like, at one point, um, ground combat involves vehicles, and once that happens, it just becomes incredibly intricate and very difficult. Um, but yeah, that was just a really basic look at the uh, low, le some low level play. Anyway, if you guys and guys and gals enjoyed this video, make sure to uh, give me a thumbs up. If you disliked the video, uh, remember to give it a thumbs down. Please provide uh, a comment if you disliked the video. Don't let me know how I can improve. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, Ghost Squad 57 signing out.